Tip FM's Tip Today with Fran Curry In association with Slattery's of Pecan, Tipperary's main Peugeot dealer. Slattery's Garage Pecan, the name you can trust for over 50 years in the Premier County. Slattery'sGarage.ie There's been an overwhelming uh, outpouring of anger and uh, negativity, I suppose, with the restrictions around us and, of course, Golfgate over the last while as well. So how do we change our outlook to be more positive in the midst of all of the doom and gloom? Well, I'm glad to be joined now by a gentleman who's a regular uh, contributor to the show. That's Michael O'Doherty, the bioenergy healer. Michael, good morning to you. Good morning. Really good to talk to you today. That outpouring of anger that we might be feeling within ourselves now, I mean, it's righteous and I suppose it's understandable, but is it bad for us, Michael? Look, at it, 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 Look, there's no doubt about it. It's bad in one way because uh, the nation are, are focused on that, but they, it's also um, reflective, of, I suppose, of where people are at because it's just like, you know, it's like the... There's only so much pressure that you can put on a balloon before it bursts, and the same is for the human being. There's only so much sort of stress and pressure and insecurity and uncertainty that people can take before something is going to burst. And, 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 and you know, I suppose when people make huge amount of effort to try and keep things right and suddenly uh, they find a situation like this and you see this arrogance that's, that emerges, you know, mm. of course people are going to be frustrated and angry, but... And it's good that they vent that anger because, I mean, to hold it inside, I suppose, is just not good either. So while it's good to vent it, but I think it's important to vent it in the right direction. And, you know, and I was only uh, in Dublin yesterday, I was talking to some people about this, and there was people who was coming into the clinic, and they were just saying how frustrated and angry they are with the way <clears throat> everything has been handled and so on. And I said, look, you know, rather than just uh, going crazy about it and upsetting and stressing yourself about it, uh, you know, take a deep breath and say, well, what can you do to really influence you know what's going on, and just you know, every TD has uh, has has a mobile phone. It's on on their website or social media platforms. Just send them all a text and say, "Look, you know, we're very concerned about what's happened, and I just want to let you know that when the next election comes, you will not be getting our vote." And suddenly, you'll have you know, uh, it won't be a question of the tail wagging the the dog. The dog will take control. Mm. I think that's what people are looking for. People are looking for you know that. You know, there is accountability in all sense of the word, and unfortunately, that seems to be gone out the door. And is there a catharsis then, Michael, when you, like, take, for instance, mm. you email your local TD, and, and you, you, you know, you, you're saying, I have an issue with this, now I'm putting it out there, and now I move on. That's the most important thing. I think the, the, the key things, and I always say this to people, ask yourself two questions. Why am I doing it, and how has it served me? So why am I getting angry? How does it serve me? And people have every right to get angry because on top of all of the obligations that people are trying to adhere to, uh, you know, they, parents in particular have kids going back to school. That's more mm. uncertainty, more added pressure. And it's that. It's that's, that's, the, that's the one side. And, and that's what's really causing the frustration and the agitation. But it's, it's absolutely, you know, venture anger, then bury it. You know, it's, it's a little bit uh, like the little story of the two monks. Mm. Can I just have a moment to tell a story? When yes, <clears throat> the, you know, the, These two monks are, you know, going on a journey. Uh, you know, an old monk and a young monk or a senior monk and a, and, and a junior monk, if we want to call it that. But they're going on a journey, but they have to cross a river. So what happened was that uh, when they came to the river, there was a young lady. And this young lady at the river, of course, the young monk said to the older monk, you know, the more senior monk, he said, look, we can't touch her. We can't do anything for her. She wants to get across the river, but we can't touch her. And that's the way it is. Anyway, the, the elder of the monk just decided, look... I'm going to just pick her up. So he just said nothing. He picked her up, brought her across, and left her down on the other side. So they both walked on, and the younger guy is just saying, the younger monk is just saying, look, you know, he's saying nothing but to himself. He's full of frustration, full of, you know, annoyance and anger because the old monk has just done this, and he's, you know, he has, it's against their religion, it's against their philosophy and all of that kind of thing. And it's going on for an hour, for two hours, three hours, four hours, and five hours. And eventually, before they get back to the monastery, he, the young monk says to the older monk, he says, look, <clears throat> he says, you know, why did you pick up that woman and bring her across the river? Uh, you know, that's totally against our philosophy and religion and so on. So the elderly monk said to him, listen, he says, I left the woman at the bank of the river on the other side. Why are you still carrying her? It's very interesting indeed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, get, the, you get the philosophy. Yeah, get, yeah, of you, course. Get it. The of course, yes. Exactly. Yeah, you, the, the, the moral of the story is like, to move carry on. it, 
carry it, but leave it down. Have the ability to leave it down, vent the anger, express it. It's great. You have shows like yourselves. People can come on and express that. But there are lots of people out there who will not be able to express their anger, who still have the frustration, agitation, sick people in their home and all of that kind of thing. And I think it's very important that people kind of take the moral of that story, that vent it, let it go, and then leave it. You know, leave it down and walk on and get on in life. Because people have enough of problems and stress and anxiety uh, you know, throughout their life at the moment and on top of all of this and with schools coming back, heading into the winter, possible, you know, possible problems in the winter with winter flus coming on, huge issues around vaccines, huge issues around children and school safety and all that. And I think what, what people need to really focus on, <clears throat> and I was talking to a very good friend of yours actually last night, he said to say hello, Alan Quinlan. Oh, right, very good. Yeah. Uh, Alan, my, I saw we were good friends and, and, and has been through the mill himself, but we were just talking about this, that there is just need for people to, you know, Find the skills each day to uh, ask that question in everything they do. Why am I doing it and how does it serve me? And to find ways to just get out in amongst nature, you know, to not allow these things to just frustrate you or agitate you because you need as much energy as you possibly can throughout your day to deal with your own family, to deal with your own life. And that's really what it is. Uh, you know, and to disconnect from that is so important, Fran. Absolutely. I wonder as well then, I mean, post-COVID, if we take whenever, a year's time, six months, and whenever that is going to be, will we carry an awful lot of this into the years to come, do you think, Michael? Absolutely, we will. Look, we are, we are, we are products of our environment. We are creatures of habit, and we are, what, what, what we, our behaviour is a learned behaviour. So when you look at children today, you know, they're learning from their parents and how they behave and respond to the present crisis. Mm. And those children will carry that as a learning. <clears throat> now, the great thing about that is that we can change that, and that's the, the key to it. So it's a little bit like that story. We have to be able to leave, leave it down. But therein lies the issue, because, you know, we hear this new language of something like a new normal, that we are in a new yeah. normal. Yeah. Yeah. There is no such thing as a new normal or an old normal. There is either normal are not normal. That's all there is. And we need to get away from that type of language that's being created. This is the new normal. No, this is not the new normal. There is no such thing as a new normal. This is the reality right now. There was the older reality, but this is reality right now. But the great thing I would say to people is that we can create a new reality. So it's a little bit when somebody comes to me who has a specific problem, an illness, and I say to them, okay, now let's turn that problem into a project. OK, yes. so if we can get people to turn their stresses and anxieties rather than turning it into an illness and, or a weakness, let's look and turn it into a project. How can I project manage my life? How does society project manage their lives going forward, Fran? And if people could project manage their lives by having the skills to, yes, you know, that this is a situation that has arisen and it will pass. But it's then to be able to project manage our lives into a situation where we have some sort of spiritual grounding, because that's the bigger challenge to us. In some way, you know, we, we, we have allowed social media, we have allowed the media themselves, I suppose, to a large degree internationally. We have allowed certain people to guide our young people in particular mm. through, through, the, through the screen. And unfortunately, in that, there is lots of doom and gloom and fear. What I'm saying to people is let's take back responsibility of our future. Let parents and ourselves take back responsibility of making, creating a project and project managing our way out of this because we're not going to get that leadership from the government. That's quite obvious. So what we need to do is to try in some way, uh, you know, in some way get people into a, a sort of practice or to create a future that's positive, that will be grounded in something that's deep rooted into our religious or sort of spiritual sense. Even though, and I, I, I realise I'm being a little bit negative here when I say this to you, but I mean, the shocking thing to me, Michael, mm. uh, with COVID was to realise how vulnerable we are, not just in Ireland, but globally, how vulnerable we are to a virus, for example. And I don't think we'll ever be the same uh, going forward because there will always be this lurking behind. What's next? Yeah, but we can either be victims of this or we can be creators. Now, by that I mean is that we can either work with a problem or work with a solution. So I think we will grow through this. I mean, I'm taking it personally. 
So there are two aspects of it. So when I'm taking it personally in the sense that I've looked at my business and I've cut it back and I'm finding more time for myself and I'm finding more time to meet people and talk to people and help people to work problems out and things like that. So that, in that sense, I'm valuing my time. And that's the one positive thing that we need to take. We need to value our time. We need to realize that we're not in control. We need to realize that we're all heading to the grave, no matter what the reality is, we're all heading that way. And we need to enjoy life where possible. It's hard enough to get out there and work and make a living. And yes, I mean, you're right. I mean, there, there, will, there will be that sort of legacy. But the thing about it is it's like an illness. It's like, a, you know, anything that happens in your life. If we get through it and grow through it, it's to learn from that experience. And if we can learn from that experience, then that wisdom we can hand down from the children, to our children. And that then we, means we can grow from it and realize, because you're making a very valuable point, that to realize that we need to wake up out of the illusion that we could just, you know, uh, in a way, click a button and our life would just happen for us. We have to work hard for it, Fran. Mm -hmm. You know, you know and, and the, the mental and emotional health, and more people have died in this country possibly from suicide in the last 30 days than any mm -hmm. coronavirus. Yeah. 800,000 800, 800, people die every year from suicide worldwide. Mm -hmm. Is that not a pandemic? So, you know, we have a pandemic of cancer. We have a pandemic of depression. We have a pandemic of, 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 of you know, autoimmune diseases. If we take the literal uh, sort of um, definition of pandemic uh, in, 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 into play here. So the, 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 real, the real message has to be for people that, look, that we've got to live our lives. We've got, to, we've got to value our time. We've got to value our families and friends. You know, we've got to really come around and develop the family values and grow through that. And I think if that's where we find solace, you know, because people were forced back into their homes. But I talk to a lot of people who were forced back into their homes. But, you know, I mean, I hear some of the stories, you know, they were out building, you know, trampolines in their yeah. garden, yeah. Show, putting flowers down. That certainly there was a reconnection of the family. So I think there are lots of positive things that people need to latch onto and focus on. And I think we can grow through this and I think we will have a better society mm. and we'll waken up out of the, that illusion, friend, that, you know, everything is at the drop. Yeah, you, 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 the you're right in so much of that because I know that for the last 30 or more years I've been on a sort of a roller coaster of, you know, radio work and gigs and running around the place <laughs> and doing everything and anything. And all of a sudden I had to stop, Michael. Yes. And, and I found it difficult for a while to even get my head around the fact that I wasn't due someplace at a certain time and all of that. But you learn from it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you do. And the amount of people that I've met, I mean, parents are ringing me nearly every day with their children who found it difficult, the challenge of just stopping. You know, you, if you're driving at 100 miles an hour in a car and you hit a wall, you know, that's exactly what happened here. Society and you and I, friend, because of the nature of who we are and people out there, they were going at 100 miles an hour. Suddenly, you're shut down. You're nearly locked down. You're actually locked down, which means the brain is now trying to process this. Christ, yes. what's going on, Frank? Yeah. For the yeah. last 30 years, you've been working night and day, you've been out, you've been enjoying yourself. What's going on? What are you trying to do? So it's like an addiction. You know, it's like, it's like you're, we, we became addicted to that way yeah. of life. Yeah. So when you're addicted to a drug and you suddenly drop it, or, you know, suddenly what's going to happen? The brain is going to say, listen, you fed me this every day. Why are you changing now? So it's that change that we need to understand. And that's, it's that change we need to grow from. And there are always going to be issues that are going to trigger emotions like what's happened with this golf gate business. And there'll be a lot more golf gate businesses for sure. But, you know, that's the thing about it. You know, society needs to change the way it lives its life. And, and I think that's the greatest wake up call from this. We don't need an awful lot to live, Fran. We, 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 we think we do. Yeah. We think we have to have this. And we, we have, you know, been brought in and, and led by the, by the powers that be, by the multinationals to believe that, look, at, I can make you happy if you buy this. You right. can be happy if you have this car, this house, this bag, this friend, right. well, this that's, phone. That's not that's the case. That's no. not the case. Michael, <laughs> it's always a pleasure. Are you back seeing people, Michael? Or where? Yeah, ba ba back see seeing people. And, 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 and friend, maybe if you don't mind, can I just give a mention to somebody? Of course you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, Paddy Kelly, he's a yes. friend of mine, uh, Paddy Kelly in, in, in Dunbeck, and he has taken on an enormous task of cycling two and a half thousand kilometers around Ireland for prostate cancer and for uh, the Slaughter and Clower and the Galway Hospice. A friend of his passed away from prostate cancer a year ago. He's decided to take this on. He's heading up towards through Donegal as we speak. The weather is not great at all. And look, he has a GoFundMe page. It's the Paddy Culligan the charity cycle GoFundMe page. But look, if people would like to have a look at it and support it, uh, I'm sure he'll be coming down through Tipperary and he'll be coming down through all that coast of Ireland as well. So 
Uh, I'd good. just like to give him a mission. You, I hope you, you don't mind. I know not, it's, uh, not at all. You have a lot up on your own Facebook page about that as well, if people want to have a, a look there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, I'm, I'm, I'm only delighted to help if anybody wants to send a message or a text or whatever. What I would say to people right now, Fran, is take a deep breath. Leave it down like that, Monk. Leave it down. Don't carry it. You know, focus now on what's most important in your life. Get out amongst nature. Prepare your kids well. You know, keep the stress down because that's what destroys your immune system. Oh. And just live your life. Michael, it's always a pleasure. You look after yourself. Thank you, Michael. You Thank Thanks, you. Bye-bye. Right. You know, that's Michael O'Doherty there, the uh, famous uh, bioenergy uh, healer. And his advocates include uh, people like Michael Flatley and uh, the late Brendan Grace and lots of others as well. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment.